everyone, I'm Ishita Cabra, the founder and CEO of BiRotation, the world's first social fashion rental app. I created this platform to empower average consumers to transform their fashion consumption habits for good. You can save money, make money, dress in fabulous clothes, make new friends, and save the planet one rental at a time. On our brand podcast series, On Rotation, I'm joined by our diverse and incredibly inspiring community. I'm so proud to say that this podcast is brought to you by NetWest Business Banking. Circularity and sustainability are topics that are very close to my heart, and that's why I founded By Rotation. If you're interested in finding out how NetWest could help make your business more sustainable, try out the NetWest Carbon Planner tool. It's free to use, and you don't even have to be a customer. Answer some questions about your business, and you'll receive an actionable report to help your business work towards its sustainable future. Search NetWest Carbon Planner to get started. With NetWest, tomorrow begins today. The Carbon Planner tool is eligible to businesses in the UK. Today, I'm joined by Felicity Hayward, Curve model, body positivity advocate, and social media influencer. Felicity has been recognized as one of the first plus size pioneers in the UK and has modeled for publications such as Vogue, Stylist, Glamour, and ID, and was also their first ever Curve ambassador for ASOS. Alongside this, she shares fashion and body positive content with her audience of more than 280,000 followers on Instagram. Felicity, welcome to On Rotation. Hi, babes. So, first things first, and I love to ask every guest on this series, what's currently on your rotation? Sequins. Okay. But it's always sequins, babe. Not leopard print this time. Can you get leopard print sequins? I think you can. Has someone done that? Yeah, I think so. I'm sure like brands like Rixo, which is one of your favorites. Yeah. Sequins and um, Mary Benson. I love Mary Benson. Love Mary Benson. She's such a great sustainable and fashion. And she's also designer. just changed the way that she works. So she's now doing, she's selling her like fabrics. So some of her old designs are going to become a lot rarer. Wow. Yeah. So get them on the app now. She doesn't do a lot of sequins though. She doesn't. She does a lot of print. Yes. Handmade prints and colors and foils and stars and moons. And velvet. I love her velvet yeah. pieces as well. It's not velvet season in my opinion though. No. no. How are you wearing sequins over spring summer? You can just wear a little bit though, honey. You know. Well, looking at you, very stylishly dressed, by the way, Thank in, uh, I know they call it Bottega Veneta Green, but we're calling it by rotation green. I think so. Um, but if you guys are not tuning in to the, uh, to the visual podcast series, you have to check out Felicity's outfit. Um, Felicity, what are you wearing? I think I can see a tag, but I'll, I'll, let, I'll let you. <laughs> can you see the tag? Oh, I no, can. It's, I'm just you were showing off your I brand. Was, I'm just I love it. that over. Um, it's Marina Rinaldi. <laughs> Tell us more about Marina Rinaldi. So I have been flirting with them for six years because they are one of the only high-end luxe brands in Bond Street on the high street that do plus so they're an Italian brand mm-hmm. um, and they stock big sizes they're a curve specific brand and it's so wild to me that if I walk down Oxford Street and Bond Street in particular that is the only store where I could walk in and try something on that's crazy because there's yeah. got to be at least 60 stores yeah. on that street. More than that. But it's the only place where I've actually, as a plus size woman, I've walked in and I felt special and I felt like, oh my God, there are pieces here that are so beautiful and I don't have to panic or worry that, is that going to fit me? Is that going to, mm-hmm. am I going to have to get a piece that's like oversized or stretchy um, and they make you feel amazing. I love that. Yeah. Because I mean, sometimes you might get that feeling. You're like, what's the point of going to the store? They don't cater to me. And there's no point even entering that store because you don't want to go through those set of feelings. But it's kind of a shame to know that there's only one store on that entire street, which makes you feel like you'll feel comfortable and leave happy. It's crazy. I mean, yesterday I went to Coles Drop Yard Mm -hmm. and I went into one particular store. Maybe I won't name them just because I'm not about that. But I went into their store and they had a party at Fashion Week and they invited me and they were like, oh, 
you know, I always ask the question, do you do extended sizes? Do you do plus? They said yes. Um, and I couldn't make it because of other, like, other things that were going on. And I went to Coles Drop Yard yesterday. I thought, you know what? I'm going to go into the store. Like, I'm really excited. They're going to have, they've told me that they've got extended mm -hmm. sizes. And I walked in. They're like, oh, we do up to an 18. I'm like, so it's just Where on. Where's the other? Where's the other? It's just online. Mm -hmm. It's just online. And it's, it's, it, I'm a pretty confident person. You know, I have a really great wardrobe because I have been doing this for 12 years. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The average girl that's walking in on a Sunday looking for something to wear, shopping with her friends, it's really damaging when you walk in and, and they say that they're inclusive and that they're not. Yeah, and then you're just waiting around while maybe your friends of a different size. You're like looking at the jewellery. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, it's it's absolutely crazy that there's so few designers to, that even cater to sizes over UK 16 and above. So the question is almost like, where can most people who are average size UK 16 and above get access to these amazing pieces, like the one that you're wearing? And that's why I love that you're sharing your wardrobe on Virotation. So thank you. I think it was so important for me to upload my wardrobe with you guys because I'm not I'm gonna just say it completely bluntly but like I've never thought that this space has been for me mm -hmm. because most of the you know the rotating sites they don't usually have plus size and that actually doesn't it's not really your fault and I know I'm gonna say that but when there are no real designer brands that are catering to us and when they don't have the visibility online because people are too ashamed that they don't want fat bodies in their clothing and that's just to put it completely bluntly it's so important for me to to push my narrative of including the curve with you guys because you know some of these things that I have learned over the last 12 years, the designers, the brands, you know, some of them are quite luxe and they are at a higher price point. So to have Marina Rinaldi, to have Mary Benson, to have Olivia Rubin, to have, you know, even phase eight, all of these, you know, mid to high end brands. If I'm able to share my wardrobe with you guys, that's not only helping those brands get more visibility, but it's, you know, it's making plus size women in particular feel special because for so long we've never felt special or included so I am like so happy to be working with you because the more we speak about the fact that you have plus size at by rotation the more users we can get on and the more we can rotate and do better Amongst for everyone each other. because it is I'm going to say this it's so difficult as a plus size woman to be as sustainable as you want to be and it's one of the conversations that has come up loads in my career because I have worked for fast fashion brands right and the reason being there is not much sustainable plus size branding and I need the smaller women in this industry to be fighting for us and helping us push the sustainability and that's what you're doing with by rotation you may not be making the clothes and making the designs but you are showing the world that we are going to include you and the more that we can do that the more people will listen no and I love that and ever since you started sharing over 20 pieces you know from Min Marina Rinaldi I mean you've got an amazing black tie gown on there you know and it's worth you know over thousands of pounds which not everyone can access yeah. and I love that you're sharing pieces like that and it's been incredible seeing after you you know you you sort of reached out and you told people who follow you that I'm letting out my wardrobe, we've had so many new listings that are over UK 18, 20, 22, 26. Yeah. And it's just, it's just been really great to see that, you know, there are people who want to be a part of our community yeah. and they're very happy to rotate amongst each other. And I love that. And I think that's come because of you being such a great ambassador for us. So thank you. Thank you for creating this amazing space, you know. But, but tell us, Felicity, for those of us who are not familiar with you, who are you and what's your raison d'etre? <laughs> so I am a curve or plus size model. I don't mind either of the terms. I got scouted in an East London pub in 2012. I was dancing on a table to Diana Ross I love it. and got asked to do a shoot as Anna Nicole Smith. And at that time, the photographer was called, or well, still is called, Miles Aldridge. So he's a very um, high-end fashion photographer who has shot some of the most incredible people all around the world. And he had never shot a plus-size girl before, but they were doing a retrospective of Anna Nicole Smith. If you don't know, Anna Nicole Smith is a 
big, curvy, blonde bombshell who was around in the 90s. Quite a cult cult woman, I would say. Mm -hmm. But um, I was excited to shoot with her because I thought, well, it's just, a, you know, an opportunity. My nan's going to love the pictures. I love your nan. Me. Just saying. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about we'll, 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 it. Yeah. Sybil always gets Sybil, mentioned. Sorry. Yes, Sybil always get mentioned. But um, yeah, the, the pictures came out and they went viral because he had never used a plus size girl mm. before. And, you know, especially at that time, like I did that job because I was like, it's going to be a fun thing to do. Mm -hmm. But at that time, there was no plus size models in the UK of my age. There was women that were older that was, you know, doing like QVC or this morning. There was no real young trend based plus size clothing for younger people, which obviously meant there was no models. Mm -hmm. I was working a speed dating night at a pub in Charing Cross mm -hmm. and I wasn't allowed my phone and I got an email from a modeling agency asking if anyone was representing me. And I was like, I am being punked. Like this isn't like this isn't a real thing. Turns out it was. Um, and I recognized the name. So it was Siobhan Doherty, who is from the Sugar Babes, mm -hmm. who was at that time working at this modeling agency. Wow. Wow. And I was like, there is a sugar babe <laughs> asking me to be a plus size model in a place where we don't exist. Like, come on, someone's filming me. Like, this is not, and it wasn't. And I, I went and got signed and became, you know, one of the first plus size models of that time. Of our generation, yeah. really. I actually left that agency because um, the owner wasn't particularly very nice and she used to say the fat girl's coming in today. It has been a whole journey, babe. And now I'm with Milk Modern Management who are, I personally think, at the forefront of pushing inclusion and diversity. It's been a, you know, it's been a decade of really pushing and fighting for brands, for representation and for opening doors and like making space for curvier people. But so tell us your raison d'etre. I think that's where it comes from, right? I think in life it's just to find a peace and happiness within yourself, mm -hmm. within your within your mind and within your body, within your whole being, mm -hmm. is to find that peace mm -hmm. and to, to find that acceptance within yourself. And I think in, in my career it's, this, it's the same thing, but it's probably more about like finding acceptance in a world that has so much influence. So the fashion industry has such an influence on us, whether we want to say it or not. And that's all genders, all ages, all sizes. But I mean, you've been doing this for 12 years now. You know, you've yeah. been talking about this actively and you're not doing it for yourself. You're doing it for everyone, really. Um, because as you said, the, you know, average size is over UK 16 yeah. in the UK alone. So it's not just for you. At the beginning, like the pictures came out and I thought it was just, you know, a bit of fun. Mm -hmm. But it was the reaction from my peers and people around me at that time that were like, oh, my God, Felicity, like, if you can get in that space, like, oh, my God, like, we can as well. And it was their support at the beginning that I thought, oh, hang on. They're sort of giving me this confidence to push these doors open. So it was more of a fight. It was like, okay, let's see how much more we can do with this. Because mm -hmm. I know full well that when I was... When I started my career, I was a gimmick. Mm -hmm. I knew that I was... They were using you for for something, for a niche. Yeah, but I don't even know if it was using it for the niche. I don't even think the niche had been created. It was more of the fact that Miles Aldridge was such an established photographer and it was such a cool thing to be photographed by him, mm -hmm. you know? And it was like amazing for your portfolio mm -hmm. that I was like, he had used me in a shoot. And then everyone was like, they wanted to be associated with me because I'd been shot by him. Mm -hmm. You know, that's quite hard to sort of like understand when you're like, I didn't even think this job could be for me. And now I'm like, you guys are only wanting me because I'm attached to these images of me by a certain person. Mm -hmm. And then he shot me again with Cara Delevingne for Numero magazine. And then he shot me for a MAC cosmetics campaign. So he was amazing. very loyal and amazing. Mm -hmm. And he, you know, he's the reason why I have my career. Mm -hmm. So I'm very, very thankful to him. But I do understand that at that time, a lot of people were also trying to shoot me naked. It was a big thing because it was, you know, number one, the fact is they didn't have any designer clothes that would literally fit me. Mm. And I've seen photo shoots with models that are in Versace bedsheets. 
because they don't, at that time, they didn't have anything. So they're actually using bed sheets to wrap around girls. Were they selling them as bed sheets or as like, you can wear this as a dress? Um, it would be in the editorial notes. It'd be like Versace bedding. It's honestly, it's, I mean, it's different. It's, it's different now-ish. Do you think we've come a long way from that? You know, you recently did, um, you know, something for Stylist magazine yeah. where, you know, you, you, you were kind of in the nude. Yeah, we were topless from the yeah, back. Topless. But it was, it was, that was a different, a completely different scenario. I think from before it was like they were, it wasn't particularly body positive. Mm -hmm. It Whereas was more, now. it was more sort of alien. It was sort of like, oh, we're going to sort of make this sort of really artistic and cool, but it's not really, we're still not really for you. We're mm -hmm. still not really supporting you. We still don't have brands that make clothes for you. Whereas, yeah, fast forward now when I did the stylist cover, it was, um, I think, a hundred women. Yeah. Um, and they were all shot, their backs were shot. Mm -hmm. So it was sort of leaning over slightly, but it was just our backs. We all had underwear on. Mm -hmm. Um but that was sort of showing, you know, the female form in all its beauty and glory as a celebration mm -hmm. rather than... Objectifying it. It was objectifying. It, yeah, yeah. it was. For shock value it, or... Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. And yeah. at that time, it just didn't really sit right. I had a lot of jobs when I was younger. I moved to London when I was 17 and I just really wanted to be here. I wanted to be part of everything. And one job where I was... I was actually trained... Before I was a full-time model... Mm. I was training to be a SEN teacher, so special educational needs. I remember a, a job came in. So this was around the time I was with that other agency and this job came through and it was for Playboy and it was shot by Terry Richardson. And at that time I was like, oh, what, what are the, what, you know, all of these gimmicky things. I was like, what are the deals? I was like, number A would be full nude, B would be topless, or C would be underwear. And I was like, but do we have this option? They were like, we're not sure. And I had something in me that was like, there's something up about Terry Richardson, something that doesn't feel too right. I said, I'm not doing the job. Mm -hmm. And and at that time, my agents were really upset at me. They're like, this could have catapulted you. And I said, mm -hmm. yeah, but the guy is not giving me an option to choose my nudity levels mm -hmm. before I've even got there. And two weeks later, all of that stuff mm -hmm. came out, all of the allegations about him being an abuser. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is, oh, you got to go with your gut feeling. Mm -hmm. Not long after that, I ended up quitting the job um, teaching because it was just too much to try and... It's two completely different worlds. It's two completely well. different worlds. But again, I don't, I don't think people realize that modeling, especially back then, I was doing a lot of editorials so the difference between editorials and commercials for anyone listening is editorials are predominantly um, magazines, um, newspapers, all of it is not paid. Mm -hmm. Commercial side is when you work for a brand. So let's just say you did like a jeans campaign or an underwear campaign or you work for, you know, a food brand. That's where the money is. And at that time, I was only doing editorial mm -hmm. because there just wasn't enough paid work. There wasn't enough clothing that fit me, but also... Makeup, beauty, all of that stuff. They weren't that into it wasn't a big curve industry. Yeah. Yet, yeah. You know. But it wasn't that big either, was it? I don't know. I think I think the industry was big within beauty and advertising, but I don't think that they were really into inclusivity as much as they are now. So tell us about your two hashtags, including the curve and self-love brings beauty. So self-love brings beauty was made oh, I'm gonna say around 2015, I was the little weirdo in the industry because people didn't understand why I was there. Mm. I did a MAC Cosmetics campaign, which was a huge campaign because they hadn't really used the plus size model before, only if it was maybe a celebrity, like a celebrity collab, mm -hmm. but not just, you know, a normal, regular girl. And I was being interviewed about the campaign and this journalist said to me, you know, Hi, you know, you know, well done on your campaign. So what is your diet like? What is your gym routine like? How do you keep fit? Did they ask the other model, the other people in the campaign the same question? I was the only person in the campaign. Oh, okay. But the answer would be no. The other people that they were interviewing, if they were smaller, then they wouldn't be asking the questions. It was because that person themselves didn't understand why I had a place at the table. Mm. And... 
it's quite sad really but when you think about it it's like but that's probably what they've been brought up to think what the media has thought mm. and I just sat there and it happened quite a lot mm. and I just thought if these journalists had self-love within themselves they would make you know they would be able to understand that actually you know everybody can be beautiful and everyone is beautiful if you had that understanding of self-love mm. so self-love brings beauty just sort of rolled off the tongue and I was with my best friend who lived at the seaside at the time and I was like I really need to like maybe push this narrative so I made it into a hashtag I made a logo mm. um and yeah just started everything that I was talking about online I would include self-love brings beauty and it's sort of it's traveled with me around the world. I've done workshops with different brands and, you know, podcasts and interviews and everything. But it's sort of ingrained within me that that is the, the main message behind my whole career is that, you know, self-love brings beauty. You're very generous towards that journalist. Sometimes you really have to think about, like, where the hate and uh, the yeah, ignorance comes from. Yeah, I mean, the, the industry from. has been framed that way. Yeah. That's why he or she... You ask know. you those questions yeah yeah and then including the curve is is actually much more of a recent because I was sort of fed up of being invited to all these shows at fashion week and only being offered a hair clip a earring clip. or a handbag it's the truth babe <laughs> And all of these other people on the front row were in head to toe and I was sort of, I was sitting there, I was making these brands and PRs press. But By being photographed there. Yeah. So being there. Yeah. But being there. But what is the point of me promoting and being there and supporting a brand if there's no plus size models on the catwalk? So I thought, do you know what? I'm sick of this. I'm boycotting it. I'm tired. Yeah. I need to remember who I am and not to feel grateful for being involved in something that we're not. And I, do you know what? I also felt a big pressure because, you know, I've worked really hard to get where I am. And when you feel like in certain certain shows or um, events, I, I felt like I was always the only plus girl there. So I felt like I had to be there to show the representation. But I do not represent the community, you know? It, there is many of us. Why Why was it only that me was always getting invited? Mm. So I, I did feel that pressure of like, oh, I should go. But then on the other hand, I thought, you know what? I'm not doing this anymore. Like, It's, it's not, not your job. It's not my job, but it's not, not even that. It's like, no one is gaining from this. Mm. Not even me. So I, I boycotted it. I wrote online and I said, you know what? I'm not doing this anymore. Until the brands are much more inclusive and including us on the runway, I'm not attending. Um, and then... Obviously, we had a pandemic. We had a lot of the shows were online. And I started to document how many plus size or curve models there were at each show um, for each fashion week for the whole of fashion month. A lot of analytical work in there, by it the way. It was a lot, babes. Yeah. But I started to see New York was always at the forefront when it comes to including the curve mm. because they just have some incredible brands and they just really do it properly. You've also got Rihanna, who does Savage Fenty over in New York, who I think she was the person that actually really showed the world what we look like mm -hmm. and how powerful and beautiful it is. And that sells clothes. She proved the point. Anyway, um, New York was always at the forefront. London was very, very far behind. Um, Paris was getting there, but Milan was, was in fourth place. So yeah, including the curve, I just, I assessed every season. And then last season, I decided to go back to Fashion Week to see. Um, and it's I loved all your looks. Thank like, you. I, I loved every one of them. You killed it. And I like what you said that you, you know, often a lot of the clothing that's being offered in, you know, these plus sizes, they're always to hide, um, you know, curved bodies away. Yeah. But what you wore was always sort of, I mean, I love it. Like even what you're wearing right now, it's just amazing. It actually like makes you look so vibrant, so happy and you carry it so well. Thank you. Um, and you did that so well in the fashion weeks that I saw you in. Well, I think it was important because when I first went out there, I was like, I'm only going to wear independent, inclusive designers for street style and going to the shows. And then I documented that all online. And to be honest, most of those outfits that I shot are on my by rotation shops. They are. We they love are. your profile yeah. on there. Everyone uh, loves you on there. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
but yeah, I was like, I'm going to, sh- I'm going to showcase the people that need to be showcased. So, um, I did that. And then I've been writing for Glamour. Um, I loved your article on there. And you. that's where you talked about this analysis as well of yeah. all the different models that you saw on the four different fashion weeks. Yeah. So it's including the curve. Um, I basically give first, second, third and fourth place to who's doing it, who are the designers that we should be looking out for and showing them from different weeks. So this year, London had 71 curve or plus size models and last season they had 45. And that is the biggest jump in inclusivity I've seen in the last sort of five years. And I was really shocked because London was so far behind, unfortunately. Um, And yeah, there's been a lot of talk about it recently. So yeah, I've been doing the Including the Curve because Vogue Business um, also picked it up and they did their own review, um, which was great. And yeah, there's been a lot of press around it. It's great because that hashtag has become a serious movement that's actually making the industry and the designers change the way that they're producing these clothing because often we can look at we can look at a show at fashion week and you can see a sprinkle of diversity i think oh my god they're amazing oh my god that brand is so good that they've ticked that box well actually i've looked and there's 45 models walking and you've got one plus size girl Mm. on the that's not inclusive yeah it may look it because you might have put them in the most flamboyant outfit and you think oh my god they're supporting us but they're not you know, and it's you have also, to do better. Yeah. Yeah. One out of 45 looks is not enough. Yeah. There was also a fashion house that did a huge campaign recently, a big high-end designer, and they used a beautiful plus-size singer. And she had the most amazing trench coat on. And I was so ecstatic that that brand was finally going to cater to my size. So I went onto the website where it was you could shop a ball, you know, you could shop mm. the looks, mm. found the coat, and it was pre-ordered. So I called them up and I said, hi. Could you let me know what size this goes up to? They said a 12. So what was on the runway? She was a size 22. So that was created just for the show? No comment. All right. So there's definitely a lot of work to do. Yeah. If you're going to use plus size models on the runway, you're going to have to... The, the items Cater need, for the need. They need to be shoppable. Yes. That's a bit surprising. This is the, honestly, one of the most frustrating things for me is like wanting to push designers and people to do bigger sizes. I want to promote you. I want to represent, like, I want to help you cheerlead your brand. And you do that very well. You're extremely supportive, but but it sounds like some of it is lies. I know, but it's like, but you have to make sure that you are definitely catering to us and it's not just one plus size model and one campaign and the rest of it isn't Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah I mean it sounds like you're trying to you know you've got this 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 weight um on your shoulders which you know it feels like a lot of times you're expected to be the voice the face of you know curve models of curve um consumers and you're doing all the right things by being so supportive um and yet there's not much actual you know um, change. Yeah. Do you feel that to be a struggle? What, what, are, what are some of the things that obviously on Instagram and social media, we show a lot of our highlights. Yeah. What's something that you do feel you're still working on and struggling with? I'm not very good at sleeping at the moment. <laughs> I'm Have not very good. some sleep sprays? Um, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm really, but I'm also, um, the world's, I'm the most distracted human. Um, I, I think I'm, there's there's definitely something within that, within my brain, that, that there's some problems. You just want to do a lot. I'm just so, I'm so excited about stuff, but I, I start projects and I don't finish them. And I'm so passionate about things. Um, it sounds like you want to do a lot. I want to do a lot and I'm do. so passionate about yeah. it, but I'm not organized enough. Have you considered getting some sort of executive assistant or some part-time help? No, I'm a control freak. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe I just overexert myself. For me, if for how long I've known you, which is not that long, it just sounds like you're very passionate and you want to do a lot with your life. 
So it's yeah. all here. It's all happening. Yes. And that's why you it's can't like sleep this, as like, well. This like creative tornado that's just like getting distracted by these things and never really. Have you tried done. a large glass of red wine? Not <laughs> bad. That works. For me. I tell you what does work. Yes. Mezcal and pineapple. Okay. I'm yeah. gonna give that one a go. I'm going that to sounds Mexico. delicious. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to Mexico. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Can't really do that every no. night, but no. <laughs> So following on from the life lessons that you've learned, and yeah. you've, you've told me a little bit about how your career started, you know, the big moments that you had in life, uh, Miles Aldrich. Can you tell me about some valuable lessons you've learned throughout the decades? What did Sybil tell you not to do? Sybil told me to do everything. She did. Live your life. She, she told me to live my life. She used to give me funny lemonade. What is funny lemonade? Martini and lemonade. Oh my God, yeah. I love her. As a teen, like, <laughs> like definitely like, oh, do you want a funny little lemonade? No, my nan was honestly funny and is lemonade. honestly the best human in my life. And she's always been the one that's just like really pushed me to like just be myself and explore anything that my mum might have thought was a bit weird, you know, where it's clothing or music or you know, art, my nan has always been the one to sort of push me. So she was definitely a huge influence for me in the 90s of just like, go for it. She's giving me Iris Apfel yeah. um, vibes. Yeah. I really get that from her. Very chic, very yeah. like very classy chic. and, you know, yeah. Yeah, my nan sadly is in a, is in a nursing home now. But I tell you, like we, we've had a bit of a rocky two years with her. She is my best friend and it is quite, you know, I am not really dealing with the fact that she's not doing so well. Mm -hmm. But I went to see her recently and she, we took her up for a walk in, in her wheelchair around the, around the grounds of where she's staying. And she put on her bright red jacket with a gold and pearl brooch love her it. red leather gloves oh my god I love that she has worn like for as long as I remember and they're falling apart the leather's sort of coming off but they're just she is so beautifully glamorous and like even when she was in hospital and she was sick the first thing that she asked for when she woke up was her lipstick oh my god this is my kind of woman yeah <laughs> I love her just I don't know what it is and I think I'm I'm really obsessed with with um, the older generation but I think they just dress so well and they have so much pride I think um we can become quite lazy in our generation because you know into the sweatshirts and the yoga pants vibe. I mean I am at the weekend like don't get me wrong like I am I am either this or goblin mode do you know what I mean <laughs> the goblin mode thing that's very popular at the moment like if you live where I live like my best friend would be like oh she's goblin today but <laughs> I just, there's just something so magical about the older generation that just really stuck by that. And she would always wear a coloured suit jacket. Oh, I love So, like, all these colours that I'm looking at in the room, like, her favourite colour is green. Mm. Like, that's why I'm in green today. Like, I've got a green. We've got a matching mm. ruby. Um, Not ruby. That's because you're wearing a ruby. A matching emerald and diamond ring that we both have. She sounds amazing. It sounds she's amazing. like she's probably been your role model. Oh, 100%, without yeah. a doubt. Yeah. And lots of valuable lessons from yeah. her. Throughout the years. Yeah. yeah. I love that. Looking back, now that you've told me all about how she sort of influenced your fashion yeah. and your style as well, what's a fashion faux pas that you've made that you cannot forget about? I think that they were all quite hilarious when I was younger. I don't regret any of them. Yeah. I don't I, I don't think we should regret. Like, I, to be honest, I've never worn Crocs or Uggs. Yeah? <laughs> yes. So I think I'm fine. I think so that, that's like the low. Do you know what? No, view. I cut my hair into a mullet when I was fifteen. I wore leopard print <laughs> leggings, and that I, is cool though. That's not a fashion okay. faux pas. I looked like Rod Stewart at the age of fifteen. <laughs> Would you have been my friend? And with the mullet as well? Yeah. No, maybe not. Yeah, <laughs> I was. I was raucous. I was just living this sort of um, teenage eighties dream when all my friends were like wearing, you know, like sportswear in Burberry and I was walking around my hometown with with leopard print and and sequins and everything I could find in the charity shop so I don't think really I went through my punk period I went through my grunge period like I went through my 80s period my new rave anyone that's sort of of my age I don't know if you, if you lived in London the new rave scene was hilarious what is that glow sticks no what is it I mean it was just this time in London where like all the boys would be wearing these sort of like spandex leggings and like sort of glitter on your faces. And it was like, you don't remember, where were you? When was this? This was 
twenties. 2006? No, no, no. I was in Singapore. Oh, yeah. 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 It was, um, it was fun. <laughs> Maybe that time, but you know, I had fun in every, t- every different style I had. I had fun. So I don't think like I regret any of them. I think they're all hilarious. I love that. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to try and find, I, I want to see a picture of you with a mullet though. Oh, well, I've definitely really got fun. one. I've definitely got one. <laughs> My final question to you as the main side of this podcast. Yeah. Um, if you could be an expert in any topic besides fashion and, you know, beauty and whatever you're engaging in right now, what would it be? Antiques. Okay. But like, I want to be on Antiques Roadshow. Like... Sunbury? Uh, like... Like Sunbury Antiques Fair. Yeah. Like, I, I want, you want to, to be, be a dealer. I want to be a dealer. You want to be a dealer? Yeah. Oh my God. I can actually see you doing I've it really always, well. No, but I've always been a dealer. I've always been called Del Boy most of my life. I don't mean drug dealer. I know you just <laughs> laughed. That's on you. That did the drug, the drug bit didn't come out of my mouth. That was on you. <laughs> Should we say that again or you can keep that in? I think it's, no, I think it's funny. It's yeah, funny. it's funny. Yeah, yeah. No, a dealer, like a crystal dealer. Yeah. <laughs> Also, that's not helping me here. Um, I actually, I bought you something from my bag. What did you bring me? What, what's in the bag? Well, as I'm a dealer. Yeah, Felicity, my dealer. Oh, she brought me crystal. It's a citrine. A citrine. Yeah. Ooh, it's very, very pretty. And it's kind of sage green. I love it. What will it do? This is a citrine. It is... Um, it's a raw crystal that I, I got obsessed with like antiques and crystals and I consider myself a crystal dealer. Um, so you would be an antiques dealer who also deals with crystals. Yeah, gemstones. Not, uh, the other type of crystal, gemstone crystal. No mess, no, yeah. okay. just, just <laughs> healing crystals. I love it. And yeah, so this one is um, to give you like, it's good for wealth and protection and prosperity. I love it. So you got to keep it in the office, but you need to, you need to go and put it and wash it under cold water. Okay. Because it's got my energy on it because I brought it here with me. But you. your energy is amazing. I know, but you need your energy in it. Okay, cool. Yeah. I'll, I'll infuse it with my energy. Yeah, and then leave it under the moon, the full moon to charge. Is, are you being serious? Absolutely. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll do that. You look terrified. Do you know when the, fin- the next full moon is? Um, it'll be in about a week's time because we just have the new Do you moon. actually know? Yeah. Okay. Felicity, it's been so great to have you on the show. I feel like it's been, it's just been us catching up as friends and people are just eavesdropping into our amazing conversation. <laughs> um, thank you for my crystal as You're well. so welcome. And we'll see you on the Birotation app. But how else can we find you if we want to find you? Felicity Hayward on pretty much any anything you can find, babe. And we should use the <laughs> hashtags as well. Yeah, so if you are, you know, including the curve... And self love brings beauty are both hashtags. So if you are doing any, making any moves in that community, please do so I can see your posts. Thank you. Thanks, babe. For an exclusive twenty pounds off on your next by rotation rental, make sure to use the code on rotation. This code works for new and existing users for rentals over thirty pounds. Happy rotating. Happy rotating.